In this first example, we're looking at a 0 0.4089 gram sample of benzoic acid. And what we're doing is we're looking at the combustion reaction in a constant volume cal calorimeter. And then what was measured was that we saw a temperature change in the water from 20.17 to 22.22 degrees Celsius. And so if the effective heat capacity of the bomb calorimeter plus the water is 5,267.8 joules per Kelvin, what we're doing is calculating the change in internal energy and the change in enthalpy for the combustion of benzoic acid in kilojoules per mole. And really the purpose of this example is just to look at the difference between the internal energy and the enthalpy change for a given reaction. So first let's draw or let's write down our balanced chemical reaction. So in this case we have the benzoic acid C6H5COOH. That's going to start as a solid. We're going to be combusting it with oxygen, which will be a gas. Combustion goes to completion and combustion processes if they go completely to completion, then we form carbon dioxide and water. And in this case, if we balance this chemical reaction, what I have is I have six plus one carbons on the left-hand side, which means I have to have seven carbons on the right-hand side. I have five six H's on the left-hand side, which means I have to have six H's on the right-hand side. And then now I have 14 oxygens. I have 17 oxygens on the right-hand side. 17 minus 1, 2 in the benzoic acid means I have 15, which means I have to have 15 over 2 oxygens on my left-hand side. Now let's look at the information that's provided to us. We're told that this is done in constant volume in a bomb calorimeter, so that means that's going to be a constant volume process. We're given the heat capacity at constant volume, and we're given the temperature change. So with that, we can actually directly calculate the heat at constant volume, which we already know is going to give us the change in internal energy. And so in that case, what we're going to do is we're going to get um, this generalized integral that we've used before, T initial, T final, heat at constant volume, times the change in temperature. And so we're going to integrate this value. I'm going to write in all the constants that we know already. QV is equal to the integral over 293.32 to 295.37. I've already substituted in for Kelvin based on these um, temperatures in degrees Celsius. 5267.8 times dt. Well, since I have a constant times dt, then really this is just an integral of dt. So I've got 5267.8 times t evaluated between 293.32 to 295.37. In this case, I'm just applying my fundamental theorem of calculus, 5267.8 times 295.37, and then I'm going to be subtracting off 293.32. That means my heat at constant volume is just going to be equal to 1.08 times 10 to the 4 joules. And as I said before, this is equal to my change in internal energy because the heat transfer constant volume gives me my change in internal energy. I also know that this is going to be in joules because my heat capacity at constant volume was given in joules per Kelvin. And so when I multiplied the 5267.8 times T, which is what I did right here, then that means then joules per Kelvin times Kelvin leaves me with joules. Now I'm not quite done yet because it's asking for the solutions in kilojoules per mole and right now I've only got it in joules. And basically what that means is that I have to calculate my internal energy or my molar internal energy. And so in that case now I'm going to define this molar um, internal energy for the combustion of benzoic acid. And what that's going to be equal to is the negative of the delta U that I just calculated divided by the number of moles of benzoic acid. And where this negative sign comes from is that what we just calculated here was the heat change that was then put into the water. 
And what that means is then if I want to find out the internal energy change for the benzoic acid, then it's going to be the negative of this value, meaning whatever the benzoic acid gave out, that's what the water and the bomb calorimeter took in, and that's what then ultimately heated it up. And so that's where this negative sign then comes from. So from here, I'm just going to start plugging in numbers. I'm going to have on the bottom the number of moles of benzoic acid is 0 0.4089 grams. And from that, I'm going to have one mole for every 122.12 grams. So that's just the molar mass. On top, I'm just going to have negative 1.08 times 10 to the 4. And so when I start to calculate this, what I end up with is negative 1.08 times 10 to the 4 divided by 3.35 times 10 to the minus 3, and that's the number of moles of benzoic acid. And so then I get negative 3.225 times 10 to the 6 joules per mole, or negative 3.225 times 10 to the 3 kilojoules per mole, since that's what the problem wants me to express this, this answer in. But what we found now is the change in internal energy, or the molar change in internal energy for the benzoic acid. Let's now look at the change in enthalpy for this process. So as we've seen, the change in enthalpy is equal to the change in internal energy plus the change in P times V. And as we can just guess off the top of our heads, if we're dealing with things that are solids or liquids, then when we do processes, we're probably not going to see huge changes in the volume of the pressure of solids or liquids. So if we're dealing with solids or liquids, then this delta PV term is just going to be very small. However, when we deal with gases, we know that PV is equal to nRT, and we know that we can have very large changes in pressure or volume when we're dealing with gases if we change the temperature, for instance. And so that's why I'm going to substitute in that ideal gas law expression. Since we're not given explicitly pressures or volumes, but we are given a temperature. And so when we are actually, we also deal with changes in the number of moles in terms of our, the number of gases that we create. And so that's how we're going to then utilize this expression to then can determine what is the change in enthalpy of our process. This next part is probably the hardest part conceptually to understand. But what I'm writing down is the change in enthalpy is equal to the change in internal energy plus n, or sorry, plus r t times delta n. And the reason why I say this is conceptually the hardest is that we're looking at the, the problem and it says, well, the temperature changed from 20.17 to 22.22 degrees Celsius. And the thing is, is that that's what we, again, that's what we measured in the bomb calorimeter in the water and in the bomb calorimeter itself we saw that temperature increase. But what that's a result of is an amount of heat that was transferred from the combustion reaction into the water, and that's why we saw this temperature change. In reality, in the process itself, what has actually changed, since we're only counting gases, is that we saw basically 7.5 moles of gas turn into 7 moles of gas. And that's basically the value, the significant part of this delta PV or delta NRT that's the significant part of this expression, is that change in the number of moles. So based on that, then what we can do is we can write this expression out, and we can say, well, the delta U, we've already seen that get calculated. In terms of joules per mole, then we're going to use negative 3.225 times 10 to the 6. From that, we're going to add on the ideal gas law, or the, the gas constant rather, 8.3145. The temperature, which in this case I'm going to use the lower temperature since that's what it started at, 293.32. And then this change in moles, where we're going to, we went, the final was 7 moles of gas minus 7.5 moles of gas. And again, I'm using this version of the, of the gas constant because this value gives me joules per mole Kelvin. I'm going to multiply it by a temperature and by a number of moles. And so then that just leaves me joules. 
and I'm using this value, this times 10 to the 6th value of the internal energy we just calculated because it's also in joules. And this way I'm not making any mistakes with my, my units. Change in enthalpy, still minus 3.225 times 10 to the 6th. From that I'm going to be subtracting off 1.22 times 10 to the 3. And so we can see already that this delta PV or delta NRT term is a couple of orders of magnitude smaller than, than the internal energy of the system, where we've got times 10 to the 3 versus times 10 to the 6. But when we evaluate this, what we see in the end is that we actually get a small change in our enthalpy relative to our internal energy. And granted, it is a small change. However, we can see that it is significant enough that it is measurable. And that's the thing. Whenever we're dealing with anything or in terms of any predictive um, power of any sort of calculation is that we want to be able to do these calculations so we can make predictions and then be able to observe them. By being able to make these predictions and then again being able to observe these predictions in experiment, we can then actually convince ourselves that we fully understand the system that we have under observation.